Hey guys, welcome back out to the shop. That has happened to each and every one of us uh, that's ever run a drill or a drill press and we've we've dulled a bit, we've broke a bit, chipped a bit. Um, it happens. Now, there's a multitude of gadgets out there on the market that are um, drill sharpening tools. I'm not here to disclaim any of them. I don't use them. I never have and I probably never will. Uh, I learned a task way early in my first apprenticeship on how to sharpen a drill bit with a bench grinder and I use it all the time. Disclaimer time. If you're a machinist or you're a guy that needs to drill precise exact holes, this probably isn't for you because we're not measuring anything. We're going off of eyeball. We have human faults. We shake. We stand crooked, we look weird at what we're doing, and we just go with our best guess. So, be nice down in the comments, you guys. This does work, though. For every layman that needs to drill a hole in a piece of wood, metal, aluminum, steel, copper, sheet metal, whatever it is that you're drilling. I don't know anything about masonry, so don't get me started on that. Anyways, there's a couple things that we need to know before we go and attack this. Um, we need to know, one, the included angle of a drill bit is between 118 and 135 degrees. Now, sets are set at a certain degrees. Um, drill bits are set at a certain degrees, and all of them in a set should be that same degrees. Now, we are looking for about 120 degrees. So, if we cut that in half... That's going to be 60. Now we'll come back to that later. That's your math lesson is half of 120 is 60. You're welcome. No calculators needed. The other thing that we need to know <clears throat> is the clearance angle here. So the, this is the angle of the drill bit from the cutting edge to the back of the cutting edge. And that needs to be 12 degrees ish. It needs to be enough of a angle that the cutting edge removes itself from the material or not the cutting edge but the drill bit once the cutting edge goes past it removes itself from the material and allows that clearance to allow the chip to come out um, bench grinder you don't want a really super coarse wheel uh, most bench grinders come with a coarse and a fine wheel so we want to use the fine wheel uh, I just bought a new grinder that came with a very fine wheel, so I'm going to use that one, plus it's new, so I know that it's fairly straight. Um, you can do this on a bench grinder that the wheel is worn on, as long as there isn't a groove cut in it. Um, you know, one edge can be wore down a little bit more than the other. You're just going to have to compensate to find that 60 degrees to the face of your wheel. So, it still can be done. You're just going to have to think about it a little bit more before you do it. So anyways, I've gabbed on for long enough. Let's zip over to the bench grinder and let's sharpen this thing up. And then let's go finish drilling that hole. Okay, here we are over at the bench grinder. Now you want to make sure that you have a tool rest. If you have a bench grinder without a tool rest, it's, this is going to be really, really difficult for you to do. You need this in order to lay the drill bit on. So if you're squeamish and scared of these things, this is probably not for you either. What we're gonna do, we're gonna use this as zero. Obviously this is 90. We come over here and we're about 45. So we wanna just, we're gonna come up just a bit to find about that 60 degree angle. Now this is not exact. This is just me kind of knowing what my angles are, and I'm going to go for 60. So what I'm going to do here, because this wheel is round and it's going to be spinning this way, when I cut this, it's actually going to cut my clearance angle for me. There's no spinning required. 
none of that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay my fingers on the tool rest. Really, really, really close to the wheel. This is where you have to pay attention. All right, I'm going to find 45 degrees and I'm going to come up just a little bit from that. Now, I want to make sure that my cutting edge is flat with the grinding wheel before I touch it on there. And then all I'm going to do once I get this started and set is I'm going to push in towards the wheel a little bit so I start seeing sparks. And then I am just going to rock the drill bit up. Just like that. And then I'm not going to really move my angle. I'm going to rotate the bit backwards so that my cutting edge again is straight across level. I'm going to go back into the drill or into the grinder again and I'm going to lift. And then what happens is, is when I lift, it cuts this for me. So let's do it. All right, it's going to be loud. I'll try and adjust the volume in the video. Safety glasses on, everybody. Here we go. Okay, that's it. Now you can see, we want to try and maintain that this, this length and this length are equal. So that's why we don't want to get, we get those off and you're going to end up with an oval hole. This is why I said, machinists, this is probably not for you. Okay, now we're not, we didn't get in there and grind it off. We got in there nice and light. Made sure that we were touching so we had sparks, and we just rocked it up. Now you can see that we've got an angle here, a nice clearance angle on both sides. Now if you see that you don't have that, and this is straight across, you have to just make sure that you, that you push into the wheel just a little bit more as you're going up, and that, that'll allow that wheel to cut that off. All right, now you've seen me moving back and forth because I knew that my cutting edge was very flat. And so I was really trying to get my cutting edge set first. So back and forth, and you will have to do that with a chip drill bit. If you have a piece missing, you're going to have to get this first before you can do anything back here. Otherwise, you're just going to be there all day and you're just going to make a mess. So once you get your cutting edge established, nice and cut true, then you can start working on your clearance angle. And that's all you gotta do. Now, some drill bits come with this, where this cutting angle is actually knocked off again, so it's got two bevels on it. You don't really need that. All right, that's it. Let's go drill that hole. Alright, so this is the hole that I started drilling. I have a pilot hole there. And obviously it didn't it didn't drill, so we're just gonna finish this one up. drill press, clunky, noisy,
But you know what? Makes nice holes. All right. So there you have it. Um, very simple, very easy. It's it took longer to explain than it actually did to do it. Um, obviously, if you're drilling lots of holes, you're going to want to use some kind of cutting lubricant, whether that's, you know, three in one oil or actually cutting lube. Um, I know some guys use the liquid from their band saws. They'll put it in a little spray bottle and then they'll squirt it and use it, use it there as well. Um, I do have some three in one oil, but for this, I just wanted to just do that one dry and get it over with now. Um, that's it. I hope this helps you guys in some form or another and um, prolongs your, uh, your drill bit life. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you think it was stupid, give it a thumbs down. I appreciate you watching it anyways. That's it for right now. Take care of yourselves. God bless. We'll see you for the next one.